<laughs> Fair enough. And uh, who would you say has like the best sense of humor on the team? Gesture. Fury's pretty funny too. Oh, actually, he's a pretty funny guy as well. So first of all, Robin, congrats on the victory. Tell me, like, what's the the general feeling around the the London facilities right now? Um, the team atmosphere is really, really good. I think uh, among the, well, comparing to other teams that are mostly composed of Korean players, um, an, analog an analogy that's often been used is that, you know, Seoul, they're kind of like idols. Um, New York, they're kind of like, well, what's a good word for it? Like prankster, kind of bad boys kind of thing. And we're more like a family and that, that definitely rings true with us. Uh, Atmosphere, atmosphere is really good. The players are all getting along super well. Um, yeah, generally we're just goofing around, just being like a big family. So um, for this interview, I kind of want to take a look, uh, try to get a small glimpse behind the the curtain and see some of the nuts and bolts that go into making a successful team like London. Uh, so to start, I'd ask, I'd like to ask a little bit about your daily routine with the London. What's a day in the life look like for you, and and what are your responsibilities like, both on off days and on game days? Um. Well, generally, you know, I just get up, make sure that the players are awake, message them, then uh, drive. You know, the players that got up early enough to come with me to the studio, and then we get food, we eat, and the players will get into practice, and I'll just be doing a lot of the other stuff that I have to take care of. I'll, it might be editing photos, it might be doing some subtitles or transcriptions, it might be dealing with like any sort of uh, media inquiries or with uh, any requests from Blizzard, etc. So usually that just kind of takes up the whole day when you're trying to manage 13 people and you're the only one with uh, proficient English, right? On game days, it's honestly not that different. It's just that we have to get up earlier. Get that must be difficult. <laughs> it can be for certain players. Um, I personally don't have that much trouble getting up a little bit earlier, but uh, yeah, just rallying everyone coming here on time and uh, making sure that everything is set. We have enough snacks to make sure that nobody stays hungry throughout game day because the players don't want to be super full before they play. Mm -hmm. They want to like keep nomming on a little bit of stuff like crackers, bananas, things like that. A lot of people talk about is is jitters on, on stage. Uh, obviously coffee and other like high caffeine things can't necessarily help with that. Uh, have you had to go through the process of breaking anybody of uh, some bad coffee habits or anything like that that would cause them to uh, have jitters or anything on stage? Um, I don't think so. So far we haven't had any issues like that. Uh, the players, though they do drink coffee sometimes, I think I'm the only avid coffee drinker on the team. They do drink energy drinks before they go on stage, but I don't think that's caused any problems apart from, you know, having to relieve yourself between games sometimes. <laughs> because, you know, the inherent capacity of caffeine that can make it diuretic. Sure, sure. Uh, so what does your working relationship look like with the rest of the Spitfire and C9 staff as a whole? I mean, the organization is quite large, obviously. Um, are you guys kind of isolated or do you have a much more extensive relationship with the rest of C9? Well, compared to League of Legends, it's it does feel a little bit isolated, but that's because, you know, it's in Santa Monica, Jack's there all the time. Um, however, there is really good communication going on between the staff and the players, as well as the staff and the org itself. Sort of trifecta that communicates with each other, so there hasn't really been that many issues, honestly. As somebody who's tasked with looking out for these guys, do you have to keep a degree of separation between yourself and the players, or is it important to maintain a tight and close-knit relationship with them? I would say that normally it it is important to make sure that you're not too close to the players and you, you know, sort of keep a little bit of distance. However, because we are all Korean and I am older than them, that kind of gives me like a cultural authority over them, being the older guy and also being the guy that has been in esports longer than most people on the team. So that part just makes it a lot easier for me to do my job. Like when I tell them to do things or certain things need to be done, normally just gets done without that much backlash. It's pretty easy. So, you know, you, you mentioned uh, Spitfire being much uh, much like a family. And I know a lot of parents who can't handle their own teenagers or 20-something-year-old children. What's it like trying to manage 12 or 13 of them and, and keep them in tip-top competitive shape? It's tough, man. It's not easy. You know? Uh, yeah. Um, I think it's a general trend in esports that players are generally mentally younger than their actual age. Um, 
I think that can be attributed to mostly, you know, them not going to college or dropping out of high school, something like that. You're going through hardships in life that are, you know, intertwined with other people. You get affected by things that not are ne that are not necessarily your fault. You have to deal with, you know, professors or your parents live away from your parents in your dorm, etc. They don't go through that. They just come into this like sort of isolated world of their own where they just keep playing video games in front of computers and see only the people that you see every day and uh, perhaps that's why everyone is kept mentally a little bit younger than others um, and that's where the challenge is right the challenge is to be able to you know assert a sort of leadership that these people who are away from home who are under immense pressure all the time have someone to look up to and they can follow and yeah that's like the toughest part yeah so uh, just to expand on that um you know obviously the the late teens and early 20s are kind of uh, a really big time to develop into who you are going to be as an adult for the rest of your life and uh not only are they doing so away from home but they're doing so in a high pressure environment like you said so i mean what what do you do as somebody who looks out for these guys to help kind of um ease that transition for them and, and help build them into the people that, that they can be while also maintaining them as competitors. So one of the things that I used to do when I first became a manager was I thought, hey, I need to make sure that these guys can play the game to the fullest and not have to worry about anything else. So I just sort of did everything for them that isn't related to gaming. Um, but I quickly learned that that's probably not the best thing to do. Instead of spoon feeding him, you know, the whole, instead of don't teach, don't uh, give a man a fish, teach him how to fish, you know, that sort of deal. So um, I've been trying to make the players act a little more independently when they need help with me. Like, hey, how do anything from like, how do I order stuff off of the web, this website here to like, oh, I need to go to the sort of security office to do this, etc. Like open up, opening up a bank account or your card's blocked, so you need to make a call. I encourage the players to do it themselves before they come to me and actually give it an effort because these are like the adult skills that you need as you're growing up. And if I spoon feed everything, everything to the players, sure, it'll be easier for them, but they won't be able to learn and overcome these things in the future. Fair enough. Um, so, I mean, that, that basically covers the, the um, building them into people. But, you know, the, I, I, you mentioned another challenge, which is just homesickness. Obviously, I mean, when I first moved 30 minutes away from my house, I got homesick. You know, these guys are a lot farther than yeah. that. And, uh, and you're their main link into uh, Western culture. So um, what, what kind of a, like what's the challenge for you in building an environment that's comfortable for them to feel at home here? Um, while also, you know, helping to inundate them into um, the Western scene with the Western fan base. Um, regarding making the feel, uh, making the players feel more at home, we've been uh, doing a lot of different stuff. I mean, you know, cultivating the whole family environment also helps, I think, a little bit. With the players missing home a lot, um, we take them out on weekends to K-Town, Korean food, or even to amusement parks and things like that. So make sure that they have a good time. And we also, are, we also have a catering service that serves Korean food. So the players feel a lot more at home. I mean, food is super important in Korean culture. Um, so yeah, those kind of things. And yeah. Excellent. So um, just to transition to, you know, who, who the team members are, um, you do a lot of translating for the team. And obviously um, some things can get lost in translation, just in general tone and personality, natural charisma. So um, there's some things about the team that I, I feel like a lot of people still don't know. For example, like who would you say is the biggest like goofball or handful on the team? Mm, honestly, I think I do a pretty good job of making sure that nothing is lost in translation because uh, anyone that speaks both languages like I do will know as soon as they listen to my translations that I not, almost nothing is literal. Uh, it's always contextual. Um, so you, when you're translating, you can't just willy-nilly just pick dictionary words that match each other's descriptions and just pump out those words. That's not how it works. Uh, the memes are different, the jokes are different, the culture is different, so you need to make sure that uh, the person listening in the other language can properly infer what you mean, what, what the person in question is saying. Um, so I think I do a pretty good job of that. Um, I would say the biggest goofball on our team, probably Gesture, Bidos, and Wuhel. It's a toss-up between the three. <laughs> These guys are all pretty funny. Fair enough. Uh, and who would you say is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum? Who, keep, who helps to keep everybody organized and on task? Mm, oh, Gesture actually does a really good job of doing that as well. Um, I think the more, I think 
I'll answer it a different way. I think the more quiet players are Kureg and uh, Birdring. Right, fair enough. Uh, what's one thing you think people don't know about these guys that they should? I mean, I don't think people don't know this already, but all of our players, they practice super hard. They're genuinely really, really good people. And they try their best to perform on stage and win the hearts of the fans. Now, uh, just to, to continue on a little bit about your role as translator, what would you say um, is like the biggest challenge that you face when, when trying to translate accurately and communicate those, those uh, uh, personalities? Um, I don't know anymore, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was first starting, it was a little tough, but um, as you might know, I was with Reaper for a year and a half, and during the, over that year and a half, I was basically talking nonstop the entire time. <laughs> and when you start doing that, it's just, it doesn't even feel like translating anymore, you know? When someone talks, I don't think of the words, I kind of grasp the feeling of those words, and then translate that back into the other language. I don't know how it works inside my brain. I don't think anymore when I translate, it just comes out. I just need to make sure I remember things. So honestly, I don't know. Humor changes very dramatically between cultures all over the world and stuff. Um, have you ever had situations through translating where you've had to kind of like try to translate the feeling of a joke a, a player said or that the interviewer said uh, and, and try to make <laughs> that like humorous connection happen? Oh, yeah. I mean, just yesterday, uh, Prophet was doing an interview and uh, the interviewer interviewee was talking about the death of the Mercy meta and Prophet said he likes it because there's no mercy. And the interviewee is like, oh, yeah, there's no mercy in the no mercy meta. And I'm like, it's a wordplay. You can't really translate that. I did explain it to him. But, you know, when you explain a joke, it kills a punchline. It's right. not funny anymore. So <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, who would you say has, like, the best sense of humor on the team? Gesture? Fury's pretty funny too. Oh, actually, he's a pretty funny guy as well. I don't know. Uh, just to close out, uh, you know, obviously it's a very hard job that you do managing all these guys, but um, I imagine it's very rewarding as well, seeing, getting to see them grow both as competitors and as people. So, what would you say has been your most rewarding experience uh, while working for London? Or I can even I can even broaden that out to just working as a as a translator or manager yeah, in general. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm going to bring up Impact because I worked with him for a long time. Uh, he has a bit of a lisp. Uh, it can be kind of hard to understand what he's saying. And although he has been playing the NLCS for a long time, um, his English has never been like amazing, right? And when he talks, maybe it's because he was a part of C9, but he talks in memes. Uh, <laughs> his entire vernacular was composed of memes. And I translated Impact doing interviews a couple times. Uh, but when, it, when I was at Worlds last year in China, he, I was standing next to him just in case, uh, and he was, I believe it was with shocks, and he just answered straight up in English. And I was like, huh, You're making me look useless, but I couldn't be prouder at this moment. Excellent. Robin, thank you so much. This has been a really fun interview, man. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our channel for more action-packed content. Also, like and share this video, and click the subscribe button to join our notification squad. Thanks for watching.